Hello everyone. In this video, step 9 sub b, we will mainly discuss how the PID parameters, proportion, integral, and the derivative, how these three parameters work for the PID control. And in the previous video, step 9 sub a, I used my cooling object system as a controlled object. And then we start to tune the proportion at first, and then do the integral. And the left is the derivative. We follow this sequence to tune the parameter. And in the previous video, we found one basic group of PID parameters that can basically work for this system. And to better understand how this proportion, integral, and derivative work for our PID controller, how they will cost the PID controller behavior. So in this video, I will specially based on the reference PID parameters and increase and decrease for the proportion, integral, and the derivative. So we will see when the parameters go higher or go lower, and based on the reference value, how the PID controller behavior will do. Currently, our PID is working under the automatic mode, and our KP that is a 8, and the TN is a 14 seconds, and the TV that is a 1 second. It's really small. And this is a, the setting from 45 to 30. And this is from 30 to 45. So we will use this curve as a reference. Those PID parameters will be work fine for this system. I will based on this PID parameters and increase and decrease each of them. And uh, let's look at what the behavior change on the PID control and the process feedback. Firstly, I will increase this again from 8 to 12, increase a little bit higher and we will see the different behavior. And firstly, I will change this again to 12. And I will set 45 to 30. I'm using five times to show this uh, transition process change. And then compare with this time, we can see the amplitude change on the output become much bigger than before because we increased the gain. And from this dropping process, we can see it's much faster than before because the higher gain, the process behavior will show faster than before. We can see this PID output amplitude become much bigger than before with this higher gain. Okay, let's set to 45. This is a 10 times speed to show this transition process. Okay, and because we increase this game, comparing with this time, the arrow between the set point and the process becomes smaller than the previous curve because we increase this game. But the amplitude of the PID output become much higher than before. That is not too good for the actuators. So currently, this curve still have an error here. So ideally, we should see this process change is doing this way, can reach this same point as quicker as it can. So the basic idea that is uh, we need to push this uh, blue curve towards to this direction, right? So to do this, we could decrease this uh, TN again to increase this uh, integral. So let's decrease this uh, TN change from 14 to 10. Okay, so let's set uh, 45 to 30. Okay, this time this uh, dropping process it shows overshoot here. That's because we decrease this TN, the integral is too strong. All right, let's change from 30 to 45, and let's watch this uh, rising time. So we can compare. With this one grade, we will see it still have an arrow here, but this curve with a one grade is almost get rid of this arrow.
since the integral becomes stronger than before, so this time it almost used one grade, this error almost eliminated. This one grade is still have an error at here. So that means uh, if we decrease the Tn, that can make the integral become stronger than before. So the statistic error can be eliminated. However, we can find if this Tn set too small, that means the integral is too strong, that will cause the system has an overshoot. To eliminate this overshoot, basically we have two ways. One way is we increase this Tn, this value, to decrease this integral in fact, or we can increase this Kp to make the system change a little bit faster, the behavior change faster than before. But if we increase this Kp, that will make this behavior, the PID output, change more active than before. That will be very challenging for the actuator. So that is a trade-off process, right? So for example, the Kp, we cannot make the system too sensitive. And this Kp, we can change to, uh, for example, 10.5. And the Tn, we better change back to a little bit higher, for example, 12 seconds, this value. I will change to 30 at a side point. So compare with this previous time, after I decrease the K, the gain, we will see the PID output shows a little bit clean than before, right? Because we increase this Tn to decrease this integral, in fact, so this overshoot is solved. And in the meantime, we can see that this decrease and the increase, the behavior of the process shows a little bit difference because this process show a little bit unlinear. So that's why when the system doing the dropping and the rising, so the dropping has an overshoot, but the rising shows a little bit slow because this process shows a little bit unlinear behavior. But that makes sense. Most of the process shows a little bit unlinear. That's why we need to set the PID parameters to trade off every conditions. Or you can set a multiple PID parameter set and you can shift a different set of the PID parameters. But most of the cases, as I saw on site in industry area, basically we will use one trade off one group PID parameters or at the most two group PID parameters in the system. So we try our best to set one group of PID parameters to work for the most of the cases. So this dropping process uh, looks fine and uh, I will set uh, to 45 on the side point. From this dropping process and the rising process, both of them, the control performance shows not too bad. And after this, I will increase this uh, TV, increase this uh, derivative, and let's see what will be changed. Okay, so I will set a three second. Okay, after I change this uh, TV, we can see this, uh, the PID performance shows a very proactive because this process also have a noise. That noise is a little bit strong. After we increase the derivative value, because the system has a noise, so the PID output will be very sensitive to the noise. We can see the amplitude of the PID that increase a lot. From the practice wheel, if the system has a strong noise, we better not use the derivative or set the derivative into a very small value. Otherwise, your PID control system will be very sensitive to this noise, and your actuator will be worn out soon. Okay, so I will set 30, and let's see what we change. we can clearly see this time the PID control become very crazy. So this amplitude of this PID control become much higher than before. Okay, and the last side of 45 on the side point.
compare with its uh, previous uh, rising process, likely this process behavior be faster than before, with this uh, higher derivative. That because this PID performance shows more proactive than before. However, this PID output we can see this amplitude be much higher than before. The actuator will be very crazy. That means in the practice, even if sometimes your process behavior change to a better performance, however, you also need to monitor your actuators because sometimes to reach this a better performance your actuator will change to on off or change to 90% to a uh, 20% very crazy and uh, this change will be uh, oxidation very strong so the actuator will be worn out very soon so you need to very carefully about this so that means tuning the PID parameters that is really a trade off process you need to balance everything balance the performance balance the actuators and also you need to balance this uh, PID three parameters. Uh, and according to my case, this KP 10.5 and uh, TN 12, that works fine for this system, but TD is too high for this system. So we can decrease this TV to maybe 500 milliseconds or 800 milliseconds. So I will set my system, this uh, derivative to 500 milliseconds. And after this, let's set a 30 again, and let's see this performance. Okay, we can clearly see after I decrease this uh, TV derivative parameter, so this PID output become much cleaner than before. So this PID output, this oxidation will be fine for my actuator, but this definitely not. Okay, let's change from 30 to 45. All right, comparing with this uh, dropping process and the rising process, and this group of PID parameters works fine for this system, become much better than the previous time. So if you think this group of PID parameters works fine for your system, you can write down this PID parameters. And in the meantime, you can go to your program and go to this uh, control PID. And uh, we can go offline first and uh, write this uh, initial PID parameters on this uh, initial area. For example, in my case, my KP that is a uh, ten point five, and the TN that is a uh, twelve seconds, and the TV that is a uh, five hundred milliseconds, and this TD I will set a default uh, five hundred milliseconds here. If your system restart, so you can turn on this initial value, and with a one cycle run, those PID parameters will write into this uh, group. And uh, meantime, our controller will set to manual mode. And from that start point, we can shift our PID into manual mode or shift to the automatic mode by HMI or by setting this value E mode. Okay, so likely this group of PID parameters works for my system. And now we can stop or pause this uh, curve and we can check out this uh, whole process. And also we can stop record this uh, online curve in the meantime, the system will pop up. Do you want to stop? Yes, I want to stop. And uh, it will also ask us if we need to save this uh, online curve. Uh, it will ask you if you want to append the scope date. So uh, I will select no to choose a directory. And we can save this file into this directory. If we want to load that offline save the data, so we can click and click this add. Add this existing item. For example, I click this open. So it will ask us copy the existing data to the project folder. We click the yes. So it will add this uh, data here. So this disk, this uh, yellow disk, that means this data come from the archived data. We can check out this change. 
All right, that is for today. In this video, we change the KP, TN, and TV individually, increase and decrease them, and uh, show the, what the behavior of the PID control, what the response of the process feedback. And we will have a rough idea how the KP, TN, and the TV, how they works for the PID performance. Okay, thank you for watching. See you in next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.